Pubco Studios in Oklahoma City. You're watching the Press Row. We're brought to you by Papa John's Pizza. You can go online right now and order your pizza at PapaJohns.com. I'm Jenny Carlson. I'm joined on the telephone by Barry Trammell, who's in New York for the Super Bowl this weekend. And we'll start with our 5 and 5 segment. Barry, let's start with Thunder Heat, of course. Biggest takeaway from that big game Wednesday night down in Miami. What was it for you? Well, I think it was, uh, you know, the, the obvious uh, is uh, Scotty Brooks uh, finally coming uh, coming to his senses and, and not playing Kendrick Perkins against Miami. Played the first four and a half minutes, didn't come back in. Perkins is a valuable player, but not against the Heat. There's nobody for him to guard. His game is virtually 100% defense. He's got to He's got to help on defense, and if he's got nobody to guard, then it's uh, it's problematic. So did a really nice job, I thought, Scotty, with the rotations. Uh, Jeremy Lamb, uh, uh, Derek Fisher, both playing very well. So Perry Jones, 30 minutes, great ball. So that was a very good sign. Yeah, that was huge. And, you know, something else I took away from that game was the fact that, you know, 13 losses and 16 tries before that game last night. I thought it was huge mentally for both teams. I thought it was big for the Thunder to come away from that game and think, hey, we can beat these guys, and we just beat them without Russell Westbrook. So I thought that was mentally huge, and I think it was mentally big for the Heat as well. It was clear that the Heat was trying to win this game. They're up 22-4 to at one point. They've got all their guys. Uh, so they're not, it's not like they're without somebody or they're, uh, you know, resting guys. They were into it to win it, and they got crushed in the second half. I think that made a huge statement for the Heat as well. I think that's big. We'll see how it plays out here in a few weeks when these two teams get back together in Oklahoma City. But I thought that was big on both sides to have that game go down the way it did. All right, Barry, let's turn to that Super Bowl that you're getting ready to cover. Wes Welker. Does his legacy need a ring? You had a chance to talk to Wes some this week. What are your thoughts about his legacy as it relates to the Super Bowl? Well, I mean, I think he, I think his legacy does. I mean, anybody's legacy needs a Super Bowl championship to be enhanced. Um, I don't think it diminishes him as a player, but I think uh, more than his legacy, I think he just wants to win one. It's it's fun to win one, not so he can put it on his mantle or or uh, maybe help him get in the Hall of Fame, you, you just want to win. Um, I think his his status as a receiver is set either way. Uh, I don't think he's going to make the Pro Football Hall of Fame, but I think he's on that tier just below it as a, uh, as a big-time performer for a lot of years. But, uh, sure, everybody wants to win a Super Bowl, and this might be Wes's last chance. So uh, if, he, if he wants to sell his grandkids, uh, that he uh, that he won a Super Bowl, Sunday's the time to do it. Yeah, I think his story is uh, is, is going to go on for a long time as one of the great sort of rags to riches story in the NFL. Uh, everybody around here knows it. How he came from you know rel relatively no scholarship offers, undrafted into the NFL, and now uh, a, a big time receiver for a lot of years in New England. Now one of the main pieces in Peyton Manning's offense there in Denver. But I tell you, I think a, a ring would enhance his legacy. Uh, you know, he had the, the disappointment of playoffs before. He had that, uh, you can call it a drop or a, a, a close call in that Super Bowl a few years ago that uh, pass was a little bit out of his reach. He got a hand on it, didn't re reel it in. Uh, I think some of those things will linger if he doesn't win a Super Bowl. Win a Super Bowl, though, and some of those things start to pale. So I think, yeah, you're right. He does want to win it, Barry, but I think his legacy becomes enhanced with that Super Bowl ring. All right, another Super Bowl question. Who in your mind, Barry, is the player in the Super Bowl crosshairs? Super Bowl crosshairs for Sunday, I think, is Richard Sherman. He's put himself out there. He's, uh, you know, he's the mouth that roared. Um, he, he proclaimed himself the best corner in the NFL. He is that, but now he's going up against the maestro, Peyton Manning. If the Broncos have a chance to win, Peyton Manning's got to throw the ball all over the field, and you can't, uh, you can't ignore the side of Richard Sherman. This is Richard Sherman's chance to either be proven uh, the star of stars or a big goat. We have seen big-talking cornerbacks Fred Williamson in Super Bowl one almost 50 years ago uh, talked about laying the hammer on the Green Bay Packers. They carted Fred Williamson off the field that day. So 
um, I think I think Richard Sherman pressures on Richard Sherman to perform. I think he's capable. I sort of think he will, but the pressure's on him. Yeah, and you know what? I, I would say he is in the biggest crosshairs because there's one of him and four really good pe- pass catching receivers in Bronco Orange on Saturday. So to me, the challenge is going to be huge for him to uh, handle whoever he's covering because all of those guys are going to be playmakers out there for the Broncos. But I think the other sort of star of this Super Bowl is also in the crosshairs, not as big maybe as Richard Sherman after what he said after that championship game uh, 10 days ago or so, but I say that Peyton Manning is in the crosshairs as well, a guy that has been talked about as unable to win in the playoffs. He obviously has a Super Bowl championship, but here's a team built uh, to his strengths with all these receivers and uh, you know, I think that he's going to be in the crosshairs as well. The pressure is on to win another one, to continue to chase some of these great quarterbacks that are out there. Uh, so I think Peyton Manning also in the crosshairs on Sunday night. All right, Barry, Super Bowl question number three. Why not a lot of Super Bowl? Favorite thing about the Super Bowl? What is it for you? My very favorite thing about the Super Bowl is um, is the fact that they sing America the Beautiful before the game. <laughs> I think America the Beautiful ought to be the national anthem, but since that's not going to happen, I will settle for just singing it along with the Star Spangled Banner. Queen Latifah is going to sing America the Beautiful on Sunday. She'll do a fantastic job. The game might be great. The game might be bad. Uh, you might have a team you like in the Super Bowl. You might not, but if you've got America the Beautiful, you got the great song of all time uh, before the game. That's my favorite part. Here, I would have thought you would have said halftime show, Barry. Come on, aren't you a big fan of these halftime acts all these years? Uh, I am uh, not that big on the uh, halftime show. So. <laughs> I frankly would like to go back to a marching band at halftime. I know that'll never happen because of all the money and all the hype, but just have a, a, a great marching band show at halftime Super Bowl. Come on. Well, I have to say, there's a lot of things I love about the Super Bowl, but I think my favorite thing about it is as a fan watching on TV, knowing that everybody around the country is stopping to watch this game. Now that, okay, maybe not every American, but the vast majority of people in this country are aware of the Super Bowl, are watching the Super Bowl, whether they're watching it for the game, for the commercials, for the halftime show, people pay attention. And to me, that's cool to think that your neighbor down the street, your friend across the country, your uncle uh, on the other side of the, the, the country, wherever they may be, people are all watching this, caring about this. To me, that's cool about the Super Bowl. All right, lastly, Barry. Not, much, not, much, not much water cooler stuff left in America. You're right. Yeah, yeah, very cool that all of us can talk about the same thing come Monday morning. All right, lastly, let's talk a little basketball, Barry. Let's talk college basketball. OU OSU and wake of the Bedlam game on Monday night. Is it time to celebrate at OU or time to panic at OSU? Which is the, the, the more likely scenario? Well, I mean, I would hope it's celebrated OU because I never advocate panicking uh, of any kind unless you're talking about some sort of a public disaster. <laughs> so uh, p- panicking never helps on a basketball court. I would not panic. Um, we've seen Eddie Sutton many times have teams that weren't that good in January, hit January slumps, uh, and then and then uh, were really good at the end of the year. Now, Travis Ford's got to prove that he can coach them up just like Eddie did. So, uh, you know, the, the onus is on Travis to do that. But I think it's time to celebrate it at Oklahoma. I think, you know, this is a team that's been, uh, you know, not take time to Big 12, been underdogs, a good part of the early Big 12 schedule, and yet has persevered, playing very well and clear second place in the league right now. Lon Kruger doing a fabulous job. I think it's time to celebrate. Yeah, and I think OU's got plenty of reasons to look and say, man, we've got a great inside game, great guards, great coaching, lots of things to be happy about if you're a Sooner fan. But I'll tell you, there's some Cowboy fans, maybe not players and coaches necessarily at OSU, but there's some Cowboy fans that are hitting the panic button and hitting it hard. Our man John Helsley, who covers the Cowboys, had uh, one of our live chats earlier this week. I believe it was on Tuesday, right after that game. And basically, he spent a good chunk of the time talking OSU fans down off the ledge. Uh, you mentioned Eddie Suttonberry, and I think that's a great point. But you know what? You can look at Travis Ford coach teams the last few years and see that they maybe had some slumps right at the first of the year, January, but by February, 
they started to get it together. So I think there's reason to believe that they can get this together. Now, are they having some issues? Yes, but I think that the Cowboys can put it together once again. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Hey, be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoman.